Hello everyone, happy Monday. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together and work on a project from beginning to end. Uh, so I am going to take a little time to chill today and we have on Friday we did a finish it Friday uh, where we take a project that we haven't worked on in a while and do that instead but I tested out my new collage uh, my Louet uh, collage square knitting needles so they are square and they are interchangeable so I can change the uh, uh, the cable that's on them so I had so much fun uh, on Friday knitting the little swatch. So we knit this little swatch that's uh, basically, I wanted to show you guys how I do my dishcloths that I knit. And so we knit a little bit and I showed you how to increase and decrease and that's why, that's why it's so small because um, it was just what we could do in a short amount of time. I thought tonight, uh, the, the, the question was asked like how long does it take me to do a whole a uh, whole dishcloth. So I thought, uh, just because it's relaxing to knit, and I needed kind of a relaxing evening here tonight, um, I thought I would uh, just see. Let's see how far we get in a night, in an hour or so here uh, on, on a dishcloth. So here's like the mini version. Uh, I've been making them for ages. Here is, you know, a normal size version here. So this is kind of what we're going for. Uh, let's uh, just give it a go. I think we'll just knit a little bit more tonight and you guys can uh, ask questions about knitting. Um, we, I'm not going to dig in too much about the how to's. I'll go a little over it, but I just want to see, you know, what we can do tonight. And I want to hear about your guys' weekends and everything. So, uh, let me know how it's going for you guys. And, uh, we're going to get started here tonight. Oh, you made four, Terry, over the weekend. Oh, yeah. Just wanted to let you guys know too. I did put the pattern, um, in this Facebook post. So if you check this post, there's the dishcloth pattern that I'm going to be using tonight right in there. It's easy peasy. Uh, we'll give it a go here. So, all right, I'm going to flip you guys around. Let's get cracking. All right, there is my cone, my lovely giant cone. Oh, you loved the Friday video. Oh, that's awesome, Cindy. I'm so happy. So here's my cone of floss. This is totally ridiculous, buying a giant cone like this, but I think it is just so fun. It just makes me happy. <laughs> Stitching from a giant cone here. Um, I do kind of put like, I was going to look up what the... The color was I think I have a link for it but I always put the little label I stick it I stick it in the cone here so let's just double check I think this was uh, the potpourri color oh maybe it doesn't even stay here oh here we go yeah it's it's potpourri so I did um, I did put the right color if you guys are looking for this particular kind I, I put a link to this um, it's just like that kind of creamy color with little bits of little speckles speckles in it so it's little like sparks of color in there uh, so that's that's the plan here um, all right I am using you know I got these on Thursday this is my uh, my Louet collage interchangeable knitting needle deal so here we are it's got all all different sizes of knitting needles from I think size 2 to size 11 and it comes in this super cute little case um, oop, I got my little scissors in there, kind of stuck in there. But, and then it has interchangeable cables. So on Friday, I was using the, the floppy cable, and uh, I, am, I changed it out. So instead, tonight, I am using uh, the same length. So I think this is the 24-inch length, but I'm doing the... Um, kind of not this well uh, it's a stiffer cable it's like a it's more like a normal like a, a normal uh cable that you would get off of a of, of off of a knitting needle a circular needle so it's a little stiffer the other one was almost like yarn it was really loose which would be great for um some other projects but um i thought i'd go back to what i'm kind of used to this kind of a little stiffer more firm needle here so that's the plan tonight, and I do have 
Um, you do not have to use a cable at all. You can just use normal knitting needles. That's totally fine, Gretchen. Um, you know, I just am so used to using one with a cable. I mean, it, it's seriously all it's doing right now, the cable for this project, is it's just making me not lose a needle, basically. I mean, you don't need cables for this project at all. You just need the sticks. Like, I could literally... I could literally do this same project with, um, you know, two colored pencils, really. <laughs> I could I could actually stitch this with, with two colored pencils. I'd have to block the end so all my stitches wouldn't fall off. But, you know, all you need is the sticks for this. Um, but, yeah, so the cable is just an extra bonus. It's kind of an area that can hold, um, hold the project. Um, you can do the same with the sticks. They would just be pushed and squished on there. It, it's just totally... You don't need, cables are not required for this project. So get the simplest needles. Uh, I'm using the size 10 needles, which is what I was using last night, or on, on Friday. Uh, how I normally stitch them, I think I use a size 9 for this. So you can see, here's the little swatch we made. This is the size 10. There's definitely, it's looser. You know, there's more uh, room in between the stitches. The holes are a little bit bigger than, than this size 9. So that's going to be the difference. Um, you know, you use a bigger needle, then it's, you're going to get bigger stitches. Uh, so this, you, know, you can experiment and see what you like the best. So this is the same kind of yarn uh, with a size 9 needle. I mean, this has been washed a bunch of times too. And then this is just way more floppy. Uh, it's a size 10. So it's just whatever look you kind of want the best or want, and you can go with that. I'm using the size 10 because that's what I have out yet. All right, so I'm going to start with my little slip knot here. I'm going to hold, hold um, it in my, the, the end in my left hand, go around and loop through. Oh, yes, Bonnie. I hope you feel better. Um, Gretchen, I th I'm not sure one is easier um, for a beginner and, uh, like, I, I think it's, I think maybe most people probably start with just the sticks, um, with, you know, the non-cable one, but it really doesn't matter. I think maybe having um, the sticks would help you know, like, what side you're on versus it slipping all the way around. So I would maybe try with the sticks, just like the simple um, sticks, but again, you know, it doesn't need to be, um, uh, you don't have to worry if you have one over the other. It, it'll work either way. Oh, I just watched, um, I just watched, uh, the first three episodes of the Marie Kondo, um, the Marie Kondo show, the Tidying Up show. It's so sweet so far, and I'm going to try and crank through the rest tonight. I kind of want to just binge watch them <laughs> in one evening. It's so good. Um, the size of the needle, it doesn't matter so much, Gretchen, for this if you use a size 9 or 10. Like I said, the 10 will be a little bit looser. Um, oh, Terry says that she uses size 7. So a size 7 will give you a much tighter, um, a much tighter kind of knit the your stitches will be a little bit closer together but again it's all it's all a personal thing too it's how tight you're holding your thread and uh, um you know it's all really personal so you know you're just going to have to give it a try and see what it ends up being like um, that's, that's really the only way. And that's why, you know, if you're doing like a big sweater knitting project, they, they tell you to knit swatches just to see if the measurements are, are right. Oops, you guys, I already think I messed this up. I'm going to, I think I needed to knit one more row on here. <laughs> so we're going to go back. This is like my fear is like undoing knitting stitches freaks me out. Like, this is, like, t a total fear right now. 
<laughs> which is just so silly. Okay, I think we're back. I wanted to knit one more row on here. Oh, you watched five shows of hers? Yeah, I am, I am uh, on, uh, I just watched the third one, that family that moved from Michigan to LA and had to downsize to a, like a, a little apartment compared to, you know, whatever house that they were in. But man, the episode two, they added so much stuff and I could not believe how many clothes um, they had and dang, they did a good job. They all did a great job. It's so sweet. So we're talking about um, the Marie Kondo tidying up show. It is on Netflix right now. It's, it's new. Like it's a couple days. It's only been on for a couple days or so, but if you guys have been with me here for a while, um, you know, I think last year or a couple of years ago, I read, I read, uh, um, the life changing magic of tidying up and I was super excited about it. And I went through all my clothes and, and stuff and, and I love it. I just totally, totally love it. I still organize our clothes really well and, and fold our clothes in that fun little method where they all stand up uh, stand up on their own. And, uh, you know, I still feel like I'm in the process of, you know, going through the rest of this stuff, but it really, I love it. I love all of it. I love the idea of thinking before getting rid of your clothes, like before bringing it to, uh, Goodwill or something like thinking, thinking the clothes for, you know, being in your life and the job that they did and the purpose that they served for you, even if you never wore the clothing, like, you know, even if the tag's still on, it gave you excitement that day when you bought it and, and you know, that's valuable and you should thank it for, for that job it did, you know, and, and I just love that. And she thinks, or she, she says hello to the house when she enters it and just, you know, it's awesome. I love it. Oh, April. Yes. So all the books, uh, or not books. I read the word books um, when I said that. But um, April, all the embroidery kits. Um, I have some new embroidery kits coming out and they will be available in March. So come March, I will get them all up on the website. The Llama and the Owl are available right now, but the two new ones I actually have three new ones. So I have some fishies that I haven't shown you guys yet. I will share that with you soon. Um, and then I also have a unicorn and a tyrannosaurus. So those will be, those two will be available or those three will be available in March, but the owl and the, the llama are already available on my website. Um, but the two new ones will be available soon. I will let you guys know a little bit more about that. But yes, it will all be on uh, the Penguin and Fish site, uh, penguinandfish.com. They will all uh, be there in the kits section. So yes, yes, yes. But yeah, March is, March is the big time. And there's some fun stuff that goes along with that that I'll share with you guys soon. Uh, I'll probably have a newsletter going out about it soon here. But yeah, we're working on a really big uh, um, order of the new kits and uh, it's gonna go to a really fun place and I will uh, let you guys know where that's gonna be soon. Oh, Marie Kondo would get a shock out of your house, Gnoline. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, I, I've i definitely gone through all the clothing, but I, I feel like I could go through the clothing again. Um, all my clothing stuff. But books is the second thing to go through, and... A, I really need to dig down into that. And we've actually done a lot of that. Uh, and we've put a lot of, we're, we've decided instead of just getting rid of everything, we're going to try putting it on eBay and some other various things. And we have sold a few things uh, doing that. But, you know, so we have a lot of just excess things that we've put in bins that are for 
that are for um, eBay. But we did we did go through we did go through a lot of our books. But man, just looking at our little bookshelf, I've kind of combined most of the books to one bookshelf. But ugh, I gotta I gotta go through it more. There's a lot on there. Or you know, even if it's just I just gotta organize it. Yeah, it's pretty organized. I just gotta clear the clutter off the shelf, and then I think it'll all feel better. Oh, you've done so downsized twice now, and you still have too much stuff, Terry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, when we we moved um, several years ago, and every time we moved, we got rid of so much more stuff. But I think we're gathering it again. So yeah, it, it's time. It's time to dig through it, and you know, group all the like things together. And oh, but man, you guys, if you have not done. Uh, the way the like clothing stuff at least like getting rid of the stuff that you don't like that you don't that you don't like the clothes that you that just are off like there's always like if there's just one thing off you know what even if you like it but you never wear it because there's that one thing that's off about it um just allowing yourself to be like you know I really loved you looking at you when I bought you and that just made me happy but you know there's one thing wrong with you clothing that you know maybe you would serve someone else better than me I'm gonna donate you you know just that idea made it so much easier to get rid of stuff that it could be valuable to someone else more than it would be to you because it doesn't fit just right and going through all the clothing that felt so good and then folding folding all the stuff so it's upright so when you open your drawer and you can see like all the t-shirts and you can see everything oh my god that's so nice uh, we've definitely we've kept that up so that's how we fold all our clothes now in the little little folded little you know mini spirals of folds uh so they so they're just like all upright that's that's the thing then you don't have to dig through stuff you can see everything right away and it just really is nice so at worst I would go through all your clothing and and do that method I mean it really feels good to open the drawer and see everything that you have right in there and just knowing that you know what someone else might love this shirt better than me that made it so much easier to to get rid of it Oh, Gretchen, I just saw the episode. Um, she showed how she folds uh, fitted sheets. And she doesn't do, you know how some people, you know, I've seen videos of them like, oh, get, the, get your hand in this fold of it and then fold the other, flip the other end over it. She doesn't do any of that. What she does is she just lays it down on the ground, the fitted sheet, Let's all the stretchy parts just sit in the middle, and uh, um, then she just lets those sit in the middle and, and folds it. You know, you got that weird loose end, she just folds it to the other weird loose end, and by just keep folding it into, you know, more folds, it just turns into like a perfect little rectangle. <laughs> It's kind of just nice. It's nice not to have to have a trick for it or whatever. All she does is lays it to the ground, lets the stretchy part be, and folds around it. It's just kind of kind of nice. So I think that's how I'm going to do, do mine from now on. <laughs> she makes the whole set. Oh yeah, and then she's and she puts the whole yes so so she she did her fitted sheets but then she had a cute little box so she put the fitted sheet in the box and I, and I suspect it had the pillowcases and the the normal on top sheet all in that box which is awesome because you know if you have people coming over or you need to like make the like switch the sheets but like you know yeah like if you have a guest room or something and uh, you know, you need to make the bed for it. You can just grab this little box. It'll have all the sheets in all and all the pillowcases in right away. Uh, you can just grab it and, you know, and we, and actually with the clothing stuff, I do have a bunch of little boxes like my socks. Um, certain socks are in a d different box. 
or my exercise drawer. I have, um, you know, the little, the different things I have. I keep my shoe boxes, so I'll fill like socks, like this edge will be all socks, and then I'll have like, you know, the shorts will all be folded in this box. It's, it's awesome. Oh, it's the, it's the, um, it's called Tidying Up. It's on Netflix right now. It just came out. It's the Marie Kondo. She's the one the, that wrote The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. So that's her show. Oh, so this is, this is, um, for knitting, you guys. This is, I'm doing the continental knitting style. So what I'm doing for that is I, uh, have the yarn in my left hand here, and here, I'm going to get real close here. So, um, my working, the stitches that I just stitched are on the right, and the ones I'm going to stitch soon are on the left here. So, I have the yarn in my left hand. I'm kind of using my my finger here, my third finger, as like a landing pad. So, I'm, I'm holding the yarn from my left hand here. So, I'm going to go into the front of this stitch and then I'm going to grab, I'm going to go on my landing pad finger and grab that yarn that's sitting there uh, from, from my left hand here. I'm pulling that through and then I'm going to push that stitch off. And that's, that's a continental. So again, I'm, here's my landing pad. I'm going to push it up against my needle here. So I have this little thread is what I'm going to try and grab here. So I'm going into the, my next stitch, going around, grabbing that thread from the landing pad. There we go. And then pushing that stitch off my left needle there. So that's the continental style. It's all about that landing pad, I think. My landing pad right here. So I, this is a very recent learn for me. I have, I, this, I've never, it, it was way later in life. I learned how to do the throw knitting uh, when I was really young, and that's how I've been knitting for ages, and I'll show you that next here. This is the continental style that I learned pretty recently. My, this is how my mom knits. Uh, I actually learned knitting from my, uh, from my friend's mom, and she used the, the throwing style. I'll do one more row of continental. Oh, you call it this the pick me method. Oh, that's interesting, Robin. Um, I haven't heard that before. But yeah, so so I had been doing the the uh, here's my yarn over that I'm doing. We talked about that on Friday. Um, but I've been doing the throwing method, and so my mom did, does continental, but I never did it that way. And then I just watched a YouTube video about it one day and I'm like, oh, I totally get it and I, and I like it. And I, I think it was the idea of that landing pad that you have your finger here. I'm stretching my stitch out and I'm grabbing that thread on my landing pad and then pulling that stitch off. I think that's what made it make sense for me, I suppose. And the benefit of the continental stitch is when I get to the end of the row, which I'm going to get to here, I don't have to take I don't have to take the thread off the yarn off of my left hand here. I can just hold the needle like see right here I'm still connected to my thread. I'm just grabbing the other needle to start my next row and nothing has moved over here. I can just get started right away. That's different for the the throw. So here's the throw method. So instead of having the yarn in my left hand, I'm doing it in my, let's get some more slack, in my right hand. Oh, you can't knit, but you've been uh, obsessed with crocheting. Lucy, crocheting is my other go-to. I just need to chill craft. It, I kind of switch off with crochet and knitting. Like I'll do a, a crochet project and then I'll kind of be over it and I will, and then, then, then I'll like be pumped up for knitting again. So I kind of trade off, but they, but knitting and crochet serve the same, the same purpose for me. Here's our little, our little shape so far. It's coming along. All right. And I, I do, you guys, I do get a little bit more in depth of this of this pattern in depth um, in on our Friday's video. Uh, I kind of get into a little bit more. 
But all right, so here's the throwing method. Oop, nope, I went into continental again. So the throwing method, the yarn is going to be over in my right hand. So I'm going to go up, up into this first stitch. Uh, and so now my hands, my yarn, I'm holding it over here and I'm going to wrap it around that back needle and I'm catching that, you know, back needle loop that we just made, pushing that, that, uh, yarn off, that stitch off. So it's called the throwing method because I'm throwing it's almost as if I'm throwing the yarn over here. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I, there's a lot of movement here. I'm throwing the yarn around the needle. So this is totally how I, how I learned. And it feels right to me. So I still, I still, I, I typically stitch the continental style, which is the other style, just because it's fast to change. I think it's a little bit faster than this throwing method and, and I feel fancy when I'm doing it because it's something I learned recently so I feel I feel awesome just like ooh I learned this new thing I'm doing continental but when it comes to really fancy stitches like some sometimes I'll I'll work on some knitting project I'll work on a knitting project where you know I don't know there's a bunch of extra stitches or there's some pattern going on or, or something you know, and I have the pattern next to me, uh, for, for that. So here, here, here's a, here's a sec. So I have to let go of this hand. I have to kind of let go of this arm here and switch it around. It's just a little bit more fumbly at the end of a row compared to continental. But yeah, so, oh, I forgot what I was saying, you guys. But throwing method, I like it. Oh yeah. So for the throwing method, since I am, I've been doing this throwing method since I was like super little. So to me, this is more like ingrained in my system. So when I do work on a project that has, you know, decorative stuff or like certain stitches, I'll switch back to the throwing method just, just because I'm more aware of where everything's at. Um, when I'm doing the throwing method, it's just more comfortable. Um, and then, then if it's just a bunch of just knits in a row, then I'll switch back to continental. But yeah, if I have to all of a sudden do a, you know, knit two together and then do a yarn over and then do, you know, I don't know, like stitch, a slip, slip, stitch, or, you know, some of the, all this crazy stuff that all these other stitches, then I will switch back to um, this throwing method just, just to feel a little, bit, a little bit more comfortable while I'm doing fancy stuff. I'm not as comfortable doing that with the continental style yet, so that's something I have to practice. Doing fancy stitches with continental style, that's, that's got to be on my list of things to, to get better at. All right, let's get some more slack. I'm going to switch back to, to continental. Oh, you learned the throwing method too, Mary? Normally, I would probably put this cone on the ground because cones, they want to be pulled from the top. So, like, they want to be, like, pulled, like, this way to take, oops, sorry, I bumped you guys, to take the thread off, just, like, keeping on pulling up. Um, but I don't have, um, I don't have any room for that here, so I've just been kind of pulling it off the side, which is a little clunky, but we're fine. All right, so I'm, I'm going to do continental again. So I'm wrapping it around my pinky, this is what um, I can control tension with. So like if my pinky is pulled in like this, then it's tight. If I let go, then it's then it gets slack. If I scrunch it up, then it's tight again. So I'm then going to lift it over my finger here just so I have, I can see this area and make my little landing pad. But again, I'm still like to loosen it up, I'm letting go of my pinky and to tighten that, I'm tightening my pinky. Um, that's how I'm doing the slack. So what I'm kind of doing is I'm putting I'm putting a little a little um, you know a few inches of yarn right here, and I'm knitting almost up to this finger, and then I'm letting it go slack again to get a little bit more thread, and then I'm knitting up to that to my finger again. So I'll kind of show you that. 
But yeah, so see my, my pinky I'm now holding tight. So this isn't moving because my pinky down here is, is holding the tension. All right, so let's stitch a couple stitches. Sometimes I need help with the first stitch, so I just get my other finger in here. But here, so it's still tight, and you can see this finger is getting lower and lower because I'm knitting towards it. Use the yarn over, and ah, now we're almost, we're almost all the way down. So now I'm going to let go of my pinky and let give myself more slack, and then tighten it up again, tighten my pinky up again. And then I'm going to knit to that finger again. So I can only do about two stitches before I got to let it go a little bit. Oh, I could put the jar in a tin. Yeah, that's true. So it doesn't run all over the floor. I just didn't want to really set it on the floor. I think I'm trying to remember how I was knitting with the cone before. And I think I, I think I might have put it on the floor. I don't know. Or just pulled a bunch out and then knit to it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think I, I think I, um, when I was little, I, when I, I would knit at my grandma's house and I would throw, I would knit outside and they lived on a farm. I would throw my ball of yarn as far as I could <laughs> and then I would knit up to it. I would just, I would knit up to wherever, uh, the ball of yarn was thrown. So like the half hour or whatever it took for me to knit up to it. <laughs> That's me playing outside is throwing balls of yarn and knitting knitting up to it. Um, yeah, so I am never putting it on the cable, Gretchen. That's what I'm saying. The cable is not part of this pattern at all. Um, all I need is the sticks, right? So all the cable is acting right for me right now is if I'm done stitching for the day, I'll just let it sit on the cable down here. So this is the only time I'm going to use the cable. Like, oh, I'm done stitching for the night. It can just be storage down here. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm not, I don't need the cable at all for this knitting. Um, knitting, like, the cable is more if I'm going to knit something circular, like a hat, for example, then I'd want, then I'd want the circular cable because I would be knitting around and around and around it. Um, this is just a flat, a flat piece. So I don't, I don't need those circles. Oh, so sweetness. Um, Sarah from so sweetness is coming out with a pattern for a knitting bag. Oh, that would be nice. Oh yeah. With a little hole. I know I've seen those before where there's a, like a little hole that you can have your yarn in and then, um, the yarn comes out the hole and you can have your like yarn all protected in the bag still. It's kind of fun. Oh, Joe, you watch a lot of knitting podcasts. Um, you'll have to tell me your favorite ones. I would love to, I'd love to check into those for sure. You would take the skein out of your right eye. Oh, Jenna, I'm so down with that. Yeah, so Jenna says that she used to tuck her skein, the skein under her right arm so she could walk around with it. I totally, that is such, you saying that like out, you know, as a sentence, just that is, I mean, brings back, to, that's just like perfectly how I do it too. <laughs> just brings back like memories of, of doing that for sure. And just walking around, chit-chatting, but I got this ball of yarn underneath my arm and I'm knitting and, you know, looking up every once in a while. <laughs> I totally did that too. Oh, that's funny. I haven't thought about that in ages. Oh, your brother took knitting. They had it in, in Home Ec. Oh man, we never had knitting in Home Ec. We did do sewing a little bit. Um, oh, you're doing the size six for dishcloth. So I'm using a size 10. So that's quite a bit bigger than the six, Joe. But I mean, it is very loose. Like, look how loose these stitches are. This was done with a size nine. Um, definitely not nearly as loose as the size 10. And um, I've been told I have a, I've been told by my mom that I have a tighter knit stitch. So you know, it's all dependent on the person too, you know? So if you knit a little, uh, if you knit a little like with more tension, I suppose, uh, then your stitches will be tighter and smaller. So that's why each person should really do a gauge for themselves if they're doing something that's size dependent. But yeah, if you have a looser stitch with a size six, it might be kind of similar to my tight stitch with a size, you know, 
eight or nine. Sheepishly sharing is great. Oh, cute. Courtney Shaper. Oh, I'll have to look into some of these for sure. I've been so doing all this quilting and stuff lately that, you know, I haven't dug into knitting in a while. And I got to tell you that when I saw these, these needles, you know, I saw them come up a couple times on Mass Drop and I finally got them and man, pulling them out on Friday just was so relaxing just being able to gosh just knit a few stitches again it is just really it's just like a pop of zen <laughs> it's like uh uh what are those things uh, pop rocks they're pop rocks of zen <laughs> each each stitch is like one little zen pop <laughs> that's probably his, the stupidest analogy ever but i like it Smells like yarn is a part of the caster. Oh, that's a cute name. Oh, that lives in Eau Claire. Oh, cool. Joe, I'll, I'll look into, I'll look into um, those. How fun. Cross stitch Robin has that same feel too, because you just got, you just have those little X's that you just make more and more of those little X's. It's just nice so tonight I'm also trying to kind of get used to these square knitting needles these are definitely new to me um, the idea is that it takes pressures off it takes the pressure off of your hands because you can put your fingers on a flat surface instead of a rounded surface which has like a you know a you know a, a single kind of point of contact putting pressure on the nerves in your hands whereas this you can put your finger on a flat surface so it kind of spreads that out a little bit um, so I'm just trying to actively kind of trying to actively try and be on the flat surfaces I don't think I'm very good at it yet um, but I'm thinking about it a little bit while I'm stitching here Oh, it's so nice to see this in action with the knitting. It feels good. It feels just really nice to be doing this again. Oh, Cindy, you found some unfinished cross-stitch projects and you're working on them again. Awesome! That'd be a perfect Finish It Friday project. I'll get the hang of these square needles soon. I'm trying to get used to the square needles with the cable, really. My cable's hitting the table a little bit, which is uh, annoying to me. I mean, normally I wouldn't be stitching over a table like this. I'm just going to try and rotate this so the cable stays behind me here. Oh, you had to rip out some knitting today. Oh, bummer. Thankfully, you got the stitches. And I got a bunch done. Oh, cool. That's awesome, Joe. Yeah, this is just making me want to knit more. So this is like my go-to craft, um, or my go-to knitting project. It's just like knitting a ton of these dishcloths. Because I'm really only knitting to chill out uh, uh, most of the time, just because it's just it just feels so good. So um, these dishcloths take no thought whatsoever. Um which just makes them even more zen. <laughs> like I don't have to look at, at a pattern 800 times and, and, you know, for every row and get all these fancy stitches or whatever, I can just keep knitting. Um, I just have a couple, like that one fancy yarn over stitch right at the beginning. Um, and that's, that's that. Then the rest I just knit to the end of the row, so it's just easy. So Gretchen, I did put the knitting pattern in in this post, Facebook post, so you can see it there. So here's the pattern. Um, you know, after you you stitch, you cast on four stitches and you knit two rows. Uh, that's just to get this kind of like bottom border, and then you do this for the whole rest of the time when you're making it bigger. So increasing when you're doing the increase, because we're increasing like in this pattern, we're starting with four and then we're increasing each row 
we're, we're adding a stitch basically to each row um, with uh, every single time, which makes it get bigger and bigger and bigger um, until we get to like 45 stitches on our needle or so, or till however bigger you want to make it. And then we'll decrease. So the entire activity of increasing is all the same. And, it, and it's this right here. It's knitting two stitches. So I'm going to knit one stitch and knit the next stitch. And then it's a yarn over. And a yarn over is when I put the, so the, the thread has, the yarn has, has always, where my finger is, has always been in the back of my stitches. Now I'm going to bring it to the front and then pretend it's not there and stitch another stitch. So I'm going to pretend I have to go around back again. It's almost like a mistake. Like I've, I've added an extra loop on here. It's almost like a mistake when you've knit a row and it's like, oh dang, how did I get another stitch on this row? Um, it's kind of like that. I accidentally brought the thread to the front and then started stitching again. So it's almost like an accident that we're doing on purpose. It makes a hole. So normally making a hole in your knitting is a bad thing. You know, it's an accident. But in this, this sense, we're, we're on purpose making a hole. And we're making like all these holes. It's, it's becoming a decorative part of, of the pattern. But it's literally almost like a mistake. And after that, I just knit to the end of the row. And that's, that's it. And I know I'm not digging too much into knitting, like the actual how to make the stitches and stuff yet. Uh, I would like to do a, a real kind of dig deep into the knitting stitch and everything um, one of these days here. So I think maybe maybe by watching me do this, you might get, a, get it a little bit. Uh, but if you give it a try from watching these videos and it, it's still confusing like what to do, uh, this video and, and the Friday's video I uh, last week, I, I kind of slowed it down a little bit. Tonight I'm just sort of knitting, just, just chit-chatting and knitting. Um, but I went into it a little bit on Friday. So I didn't go into it like super duper detailed though for a beginner. Um, so if you do have troubles, let me, if you are trying knitting for the first time from that video and you're confused on something, let me know for sure. You can, um, you can show me uh, even a photo in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group and uh, that will help me know, you guys, since I haven't, you know, I haven't knit in a while and I haven't, you know, shared a lot of knitting stuff, that will help me know what you might be having some trouble with um, getting started with knitting and, and we can cover a lot of those things. But yeah, I haven't dug dug deep into a basic knitting thing here and, and I'll do that. I think that'd be fun, just a simple knitting. And you know, we've talked about doing that with crochet too. So I'd love to do like a little basics of crochet. Maybe we work on a granny square block or something, which is a traditional crochet block. I think that would be super duper fun. You know, I wanna do that, that crochet or that granny square quilt sewing quilt uh, later this year I don't know when quite yet uh, but that kind of mimics the idea it, it honors let's call it like that it honors the idea of a granny square crochet blanket so it'd be cute to do to learn both ways of doing it it'd be kind of fun And you know, this, this is a beginner pattern, this dishcloth, but we can get even more beginner than this, you know? So in, in a, uh, if I do a tutorial, like a beginning tutorial sometime, we'll just be doing, we'll cast on some row, a row of stitches and then we'll just knit back and forth and take a look at it. I mean, this has that extra little stitch in here that makes it a hair more fancy. And that's, um, Oh, cool, Robin! That's uh, that's that yarn over that we're gonna add that that makes our our piece increase and adds that hole. So I'm gonna knit the two. Here's that yarn over again, where I'm gonna bring my thread to the front and then knit to the back again. 
There we added that weird extra stitch by accident, but not by accident. <laughs> That's the yarn over. And then we knit to the end. But yeah, so we... Oh yeah, you need a casting on and slow-mo. Yes, exactly. So I, I want to do like a real beginner thing um, where we where I'll, I'll go much slower. We'll take a look at the anatomy of the stitches a little bit. I always want to know the why. Like, why is this working? Um, so we'll look at the anatomy of it a little bit. And, um, just, uh, yeah, go way slower for sure. And we won't add this extra fancy stitch, that yarn over stitch. Um, we'll just stick to knitting. And then we'll work our way up to maybe some pearls. So there's knitting and there's pearls. Knit and pearl. And then, you know, fancier stitches like the yarn over and you know, a whole pile of, of other stuff. And I'm always learning too. I always have to look at a pattern to know what the heck I'm doing for the fancier stuff. And a lot of times I have to look up, I have to go onto YouTube and figure out how to do a stitch again and stuff. You've been following Andrea Mowry on Instagram. Love her patterns and drear ninny knits. <laughs> I don't think I'm reading that last part right. Pamela, but I'll, I'll have to look her up. I used to knit not or used to knit lots. Ooh, sweaters with cables, etc. Ooh, dang, Terry, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I have that that house sweater. <laughs> I haven't worn it that a lot this year, but I have that house sweater. My mom knit knit that sweater with um, cables and everything. That would be fun. I get nervous about that just because I want to make sure that I have my gauge right. Um, so I'm. You know, so I don't knit a whole sweater and then it ends up being like, you know, too small or something. That's like my fear that I work on a huge project and then um, it doesn't fit or something. So I, I haven't I haven't done much with clothing, with anything really. Uh, with sewing, I haven't done much with clothing either. But that's that's on my that's on my crafty bucket list. Let's say is uh getting clothing, some clothing going. I would love to knit. A cool sweater that I think I think that'd be that'd be a good knitting uh, Mount Everest goal I think <laughs> it'd be fun that would be neat with some fancy cables and stuff do I oh you're so excited during Friday's podcast because you just oh finished three of these nice um, do I mainly use acrylics or cotton yarn? If I'm doing dishcloths, I'm using this 100% cotton yarn. And uh, yeah, I think mostly, I don't know. I don't have a really good reason. I've just heard people say, oh, yeah, you should, it, you know, when you, w with dishcloths, the, co the cotton yarn is good. I kind of do it because this is what my grandma always used to use, this sugars and cream yarn. It's just that cotton yarn that you can get from Joann's or from where, wherever but it's a 100% cotton yarn and I don't know it reminds me of grandma when I when I um, knit with it but yeah so in theory you want just the 100% cotton yarn for the dishcloth I think the acrylic might get a little fuzzy I would think uh Oh, I love knitting scarves. Oh, you know what? That's what we should do for like a beginning how-to, really. Because uh, we can just do a simple knit scarf back and forth, and we can use some bigger yarn, maybe, so it gets done faster. Some bigger needles, some bigger yarn, and just go back and forth. Nothing fancy. That would be pretty nice. Okay, so each time you started over on a needle, you added a stitch. Yep, um, I'm adding a stitch by that yarn over. That yarn over is a special stitch, and it does two things. It makes a hole in the work, and it also adds a stitch. So that's why, that's why this keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like, I only started with four stitches. The reason this keeps getting bigger and bigger is because I'm doing that yarn over stitch after the first two knit stitches. So that's that's why this is magically getting giant after, um, you know, just starting with four stitches. 
So yeah, so this is a little, this is, this is a hair or a ball of, it's still a good beginner pattern, but you know, if you're straight, never knit before, it's an extra kind of bonus stitch. And here you can see, so here's where we're at so far. These yarn overs, I knit two, so that's one, two, and then I yarn over, and that adds the hole, and then I knit to the end of the row. And then I, I um, start this row, you know, you always start, so it'll be like this now, so I knit the two, do the yarn over, and knit to the end again. So it's just a back and forth. Um, but yeah, so here's all the, the stitches in the middle. Uh, we're coming along here. Let's let's just so when I do these dishcloths, I just kind of work on it. I don't count as I go. Um, once it starts seeming, you know, once it starts feeling like it's kind of near the size I want, then I'll count the stitches. And uh, in the past, I kind of go for 45 stitches, but sometimes I'll just be like, eh, this looks like a big enough washcloth. And you know, if you're looking at it square, you gotta imagine like you know you got the other half up here. So this is a little small yet, but let's just peek. Let's just see what we got going on here. Um, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So we have 30, 30 stitches on right now. Um, let's see. I'm gonna keep going. You guys, we got maybe, I'll stitch for like maybe five more min minutes or so tonight we might get to that um, point where we can start decreasing. Oh, you have your mom's needle needles in your sewing room. Oh, that's so cool. You should use those. You saw a really nice pattern for a shawl. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I just, I have that, I have, I don't know, I've talked about it before, but I have from Pearl Soho, which is a store in New York, um, last time we were there, I bought a, I bought a bunch of yarn, and uh, it's for a pattern they have online of this cute stuffed animal sheep. So it's it's just so cute. And it's got like little bobbles, which are little like ball, knit ball tufts almost. Um, I don't know how to do that stitch, but I, so I'm going to have to look it up. But that is kind of an on-deck knitting project that's been in the back of my head. And it's it's starting to bother me. <laughs> like it's starting to, it's starting to pick at my brain a little bit so now especially now that I got these knitting needles out and I'm playing with them again I think it might finally be time to pull that project out and work on it for real get it started it's been like two or three years that it's been sitting around I haven't started it I've, I have the yarn I have the needles I've printed out the pattern um, I just haven't started I have to I have to print out how to do that bobble stitch uh, but you know, I got to get that going. It's going to be cute and I'm feeling the knitting, knitting bug. So it might be, might be time for that. I love knit baby blankets so much. I had a knit baby blankie forever. Oh no, it was crocheted actually, but I love, I love like yarn based baby blankets. I mean, quilts are awesome for babies too, but I don't know. I just, I always had the yarn one that grandma made, made me and I like it. But my mom just knit a really cute, it, it came from a kit. Um, but she knit this really pretty baby blankie, um, or, or, you know, like a lap quilt basically, but you know, they market it as a baby blanket, but it was all like this cream, yarn and it was just so pretty just only this cream and it just had a couple little lacy bits in so kind of like how these holes were making these holes it had these little holes every once in a while and it looked so cute like it you know holes on purpose in on purpose places and extra little like things stitched couple stitches knit together on purpose you know, in, other, in another knitting project, it would be a mistake, and this, it was on purpose, and the texture of it just looks so cute, and I would love to knit a little Afghan blankie like that. It'd be cute. Oh, your mom made knitted blankets for each grandchild. Aww. 
and great grandchild, a lot of them. <laughs> That's cute. That's fun. Yeah, it's just the texture. I mean, like, I love, you know, the warmth and, you know, there's so much text texture with knitting, like all these little bumps and, and everything. It's just, I don't know, just really fun. All right, you guys, I am going to knit one more row tonight and then we'll call it an evening. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll work on this again tomorrow. I've kind of just bailed on, on the... Um, <laughs> I was going to do some free motion quilting and um, and some sewing together, some other blocks for the Splendid Sampler 2 uh, this week, but <laughs> maybe we'll bail on the week and just knit instead. Uh, I, I needed to knit tonight. I, all this stuff was still laying out from Friday, and uh, I just looked at it and felt more relaxed so I'm like we're knitting instead <laughs> we're knitting tonight but we'll see maybe I'll keep knitting tomorrow or maybe we'll get back on top of things and and do some more sewing but I'm it just feels good yep to need to mix it up exactly need to switch things up so this is feeling right and so we're going with it <laughs> but yeah almost to the end here But we're pretty far, so uh, again, yesterday, um, someone asked, or not yesterday, on Friday, someone asked, you know, how long it takes me to do a dishcloth like this, and I thought, eh, I don't know, maybe a movie's length, <laughs> and then I was thinking about it more, that, you know, I'm not sure I've timed this, so I thought, you know, we'll see how much an hour gets us, so we've been chit-chatting, um, so maybe it's a little slower, but, I, you know, it's been about an hour here. And uh, I think I think we counted what thirty stitches. We'll count again now. I think maybe I did two more rows. All right, so two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty. Oh, thirty-two, thirty-three. So we have thirty-three rows here. And like I said, I think I usually go up to um, I usually go up to 45 stitches. Let's compare it to how big this is. I think I might have gone to 45 in this, but again, this is a size nine um, stitching, size size nine needle. So according to this, we probably well, this is probably 45 stitches still. So oh, um, <laughs> Gretchen, that's totally fine. Um, so this is 33. Um, 33 stitches on the needle. I wanted to go up to around 45. So I don't know, maybe another half hour or so I'd be up to 45 stitches. And you know, the more stitches you have on, the longer it takes, right? It's, I got to knit this whole row. So that's going to take me longer than just knitting like five stitches down here. So this is the longest part of time, this bulk up here, um, just because we are knitting more. So, you know, maybe a half hour to the 45 stitches, another half hour to get back down to this, and then, then this was an hour. So that's about, I don't know, three hours or so. Let's call it two and a half to three hours uh, per dishcloth. So eh, a long movie. How about that? A, a, a long, like, 70s movie, like, uh, you know, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, something like that. <laughs> One of those movies, then, then we'll be, um, or Lawrence of Arabia. Watch Lawrence of Arabia or Gone with the Wind, and then you'll finish one. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around, and we'll call it an evening here. All right, hello again, everyone. So here we are. I'll show you just the size of size of it. So we got this far tonight. Ooh, it's cute with those little little specks of color in. So that is the deal. Uh, well, maybe we will just keep going on this. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's relaxing. We can have a relaxing week every once in a while, right? Not that quilting isn't relaxing, but I don't know. The zen of knitting is just nice. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies tonight, and uh, it will also live here. And again, I do have the pattern that I'm using in this in this post here. 
Um, so you can just, you can use, use the pattern, you know, directly from this post. I'll also have it in the YouTube uh, as well. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Have a great evening. Good night.